Hello, I'm Jenny with GoBox and I'm back here again to teach you another Halloween painting. Today's painting, I just kept it simple and called it Pumpkin Cat because that's what we've got going on here. We've got a cat sinking its fangs into a juicy pumpkin and we've got the giant big yellow moon behind it, a tree losing some leaves, and it's pretty easy to put it all together and I'll guide you through all the steps. So I'm using three brushes. I have large, medium, and small. That should get me through everything I need to do on here. And then colors, we have five colors. We have this dark brown, kind of looks like chocolate. Don't eat it, it doesn't taste good. <laughs> Black, white, and then we have a really pretty lemon yellow and this bright pumpkin orange. Mine has a little brown in it, that's okay. So we're actually gonna start right off and start drawing immediately and just get right into it. So I'm gonna move this aside. I will pull it into the picture off and on to reference, but this is what I'm gonna be working with. I've got a little funky thing on my canvas. Okay, there we go. So blank canvas staring us in the face. Let's change that. Let's pick up our medium brush here. It's a flat brush. Go ahead and dip it in your water cup and brush it lightly across the bottom of the cup. And yes, I should mention you should have a old cup that you can put water in, a paper towel or some kind of rag you can dry your brushes on, which I just did, just dried the brush off. And then you guys will have your paint palette. You might have a little plastic palette. Paper plate works amazingly well too. Or even a sheet of tin foil over a plate works great. So there we go. Let me scoot this over. I'm just looking up on the camera. And I wanna move this over so it's all in the picture. Okay, so we've got our brush that we just dipped in the water and dried off. Let's dip it in this bright pumpkin orange color. And we're gonna draw a gigantic half circle that becomes the pumpkin. Now, pumpkins grow in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, as I'm sure you guys know if you've gone to a pumpkin patch and tried to pick one out, or even at the grocery store. This particular one, though, let's, let's make a mark. Okay, let's have a look. This is about right where the nose is, is maybe above the top of the nose is about the halfway point of the canvas. So I'm gonna find that point with my finger, just kind of eyeball, it doesn't have to be exact. Let's drop down maybe about an inch, half an inch to an inch, and we'll just make this big old half round. It doesn't have to be perfect. We know finding perfect pumpkins out in the wild is almost impossible. And I'll tell you what, the imperfect ones have a lot of character. I'm actually gonna make mine come up a little bit taller as I was looking at it. I thought, you know, that might be a good thing. So if you need to redraw yours, go right ahead. Looks like we just drew a giant orange rainbow. Okay, I'm going to wash this brush because we're gonna pick up the big brush and that's gonna help us fill in such a big area with the orange color. And you will wanna start by dipping this in the water, especially if you have brand new brushes. I just kind of push, push it gently on the bottom of the cup. The brand new brushes have a special coating on them that keeps them nice and flat for shipping. Dry that off real good. Make sure that this metal part, which is called the ferrule, make sure that's dried off too because sometimes you'll get a little drip of water that's hiding on there and it wants to make its way down your canvas and onto your, down your brush and onto your canvas. So I'm just using a thin coat of paint and filling this in. I happen to absolutely love this orange. It's such a great color for Halloween. I have uh, used different oranges over the years and this is the one that is the most standout, vibrant, opaque orange. So opaque means it's not super see-through. The opposite of, of opaque would be transparent. And this one, I mean, we get a nice coating with just one coat of paint. And I'm gonna make sure I get it all the way down here. You can paint, you can wrap this around the bottom and the sides, but you'll wanna do that after the uh, painting tutorial here, unless you're a super fast painter, because we do move along just to keep it at about an hour. Okay, look at that, that looks great. Let's wash our brush. 
clean it off really good. I just tap it up and down or back and forth across the bottom of the cup. Now it looks like we have some kind of funky colored orange drink. <laughs> Go ahead and dry that brush off, set it aside. We are gonna use it in a few minutes. We're gonna go back to the medium brush and we are going to make our moon now. So what we'll have to be careful of is uh, smearing orange up into the moon, but you know, it, it's not gonna be a big deal if it happens. I purposely have us smear some orange in there later so we get a nice harvest moon color. But what I do to start is I actually mix a little white with my yellow, so I'll scrape off just a bit. And I'm just, I'm not mixing it in the whole pool of yellow. See how I just pulled some yellow aside? And just mix it until you get a yellow that you like for your moon. Maybe you want a darker, more yellow yellow, or maybe you want one that's more like butter colored. It doesn't matter. And we are going to draw the giant moon. Let's have a look. So it is basically very similar to what we just drew. And it starts and arches way up towards the top of the canvas. Let's make some marks. So I know I don't want to, I want to have a little sliver of sky up here. So I'm going to find the middle of the canvas and drop down maybe about an inch or so. Make a mark there. And then I'll make a mark right about here and right about here. And now I know I'm just going to round these out to kind of connect the dots. In fact, maybe I'll start from the top. And just sketch it in as best as you can. You can always redraw it. You're not locked in. We're at the very beginning part of this painting, so we're not really locked into anything. We can paint over everything. And look at that, I just smeared a little orange in there. And I got a little yellow on my pumpkin, but that's okay, that'll get covered up later. So once I've got the basic shape drawn in, I'm gonna wash the brush and go back to the big guy so that we can fill in this giant area. What I like to do, picking up my biggest brush, so that this has a little more time to dry, I like to start painting in at the top and work my way down so that by the time I get down here, this has dried a little bit more. Doesn't take very long. Doesn't take very long to paint, your, bring your paint all the way down there, but it also doesn't take very long for acrylic paint to dry, which is nice. I already ran out of the, yellow color I made. So I'm gonna make a little more. Every time that you mix more yellow paint like I just did, even if you don't get the exact same shade, it's totally fine, it's all gonna work out. Like I could just dip my brush right in the plain unmixed yellow and just dab that on there and see how it just blends right in. So I like to use this sort of dabbing motion when I am painting a moon because as we know, the moon has a lot of texture and craters. This can kind of help start suggesting that, but it's really the orange that we'll put on that will do that. So now bringing it down close to the pumpkin. And here's where I'll turn the brush and I'll use the thin edge. And I just carefully get close and fill in above that line. It's a nice thing about flat brushes. See, they've got two sides. You can use the really wide side and you can use the really thin side. I've got a little splattering of yellow there, that's all right. I can just touch that up with a little orange later if I need to. And you can take your plain old yellow without the white mixed in and dab some of that around. See how I'm moving my brush? Just sort of lifting and tapping it. And now if you want to, you can put the orange on the moon. So let's look at my original here. You can see my new, new moon is a little more vibrant. That's okay. They're all gonna be slightly different every time we paint it. So what I like to do is use the corner of my brush and pick up a little orange. So I have very little. And I like to start with a small amount because then I'll know right away, oh, okay, yeah, I need to add more or no, that was too much, I need to use less. And see how I'm just sort of dabbing that around to suggest not only this kind of harvest color, but also suggest craters on the moon. Now later on when we paint the cat, the eyes of the cat are actually just, there are holes left in this black face so that that's the moon shining through. And that's how we get the, 
that pure yellow color. So if we paint the yellow over the black, it's not quite as vibrant, but if we <laughs> leave holes and have this moon color shining right through, it works perfect. Now that being said, if you end up having to redo the eyes and paint the orange yellow right over the black, you can absolutely do that. You can always paint them white first, let it dry, and then paint the yellow over the top. Okay, so you should have something that looks similar to this. Looks like we just painted a big orange hill with a sunset over it. <laughs> and while I'm waiting here, I'm going to touch up this little spot. Maybe this one too. There we go. Okay, we're gonna leave the moon alone. We really need it to dry because we do have to come back and paint a cat over it. So this, all of this, we wanna just let it dry and we're going to work on the sky color. So this one's kind of fun. I didn't do a black sky, partly because that um, having the sky being a different color, it really helps the tree branch stand out and the cat stand out. So we have this brownish color, the chocolate brown I talked about. We don't use that straight off the palette. We actually mix a little white into it. So I need to wash my brush. I just realized I didn't do that. So everybody wash your brush when you feel like you're ready to move on. Clean it off, dry it off. Usually by the end of these classes, my paper towel ends up being a work of art on its own. And I just made sure to get all the water off of this metal. I do have a little rogue hair on this brush that doesn't seem to be causing any issues with my painting. But every time I see it, it drives me crazy. If you guys have that kind of situation, it happens all the time with brushes. You can just use scissors and just trim it a little. Okay, let's mix up our color. So brown and white. So let's scrape off a little white, plop it down next to the brown. The white's going to lighten that color up really fast. So let's uh, just scrape off a little brown, stir it in and keep stirring more in until you get, well, let's see. It's kind of a hot chocolate color, I guess. Yeah, it's about like that. I'll just swipe some on there so you can see. Now, if you want a lighter sky, just use more white. If you want to tone your sky to be kind of yellowish, you can add a little yellow into that. There's lots of different things you can do. If you want to do a black sky or a gray sky, you can. Gray would be a white and black mixed together. I'm going to stick with the brown since that's what I started the painting with originally. And I'm going to start at the top corners. And one of the things I'm doing here, you see how my brush strokes are kind of going around? In the end, when the sky's all painted in, oops, I got a little bit on my, it seems to be a common thing with me. Um, the, the sky brush strokes following the moon pattern is a pretty cool effect. So yeah, just start way up in here, getting close to the moon, but not quite touching yet. And use the thin edge of your brush to get down in some of these small parts. Now you can switch to this brush, your medium one, to get around any small areas if you feel uncomfortable using this big brush. I think I'll end up using my big brush just because I am really comfortable with this brush after using it for years and years on different paintings. I'll say that and then watch I'm gonna paint over my pumpkin or something. <laughs> So now you can come really close to the moon and we want to actually slightly overlap the moon. Because what that will do is if the moon color, the yellow is still wet, it's just going to kind of, um, it's going to kind of uh, haze it out into the background. So you get this cool foggy effect. See how I'm getting that at the top here? I have to go over it multiple times. <laughs> But see that how instead of having a sharp edge, it's sort of hazed out and blended into the background sky. It really only works if the moon is wet. Whoops. It seems like <laughs> every video I teach, I always end up dragging a wrist from my sweater or a finger <laughs> through the paint. All my years of painting and I'm 
still kind of messy. Okay, coming up around here now. Again, use the thin edge of your brush as needed. And if your bright yellow moon wasn't quite wet enough to do this blended thing, I'll show you a trick in just a minute. Let's get the sky all painted in. Come right up to your pumpkin. Get in there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so yeah, I've got a little white edge here that I could fill in. And then you'll want to, in order to do the trick I was talking about, you'll want to wash your brush, get all the brown out of it, or as much as you possibly can. So I find myself like tapping the brush on the bottom of the cup. If you're using like a plastic cup, just be careful because trust me, spilling water all across your workspace is not fun. It's not a fun cleanup. <laughs> okay, so I dried the brush off. And let's take a little of our white and yellow. See how much I put on my brush? It's really just a tiny amount. I'm gonna start in the moon just to knock off excess paint. And then I'm gonna go use, I guess I needed more paint. I'm using this color to kind of just haze that yellow up into the brown around the edges. Now this is only if you feel like you want that soft blended kind of foggy fall moon look. It does mix with the brown. Now if it mixes too much and rather than being a blended moon it's looking like your moon is turning brown. <laughs> That happens, don't worry about it, it's easy fix. What I want you to do if that happens to you is let it dry. I know it's hard because you wanna just work it and work it, but trust me, let it dry for a bit. And we'll work on adding stars into the sky and by that time, you can come back and you can touch up any areas of your moon that got a little too chocolate milky. All right, let's wash the brush off. This next part is one of my favorites because it's so easy and it's fun. We're gonna paint stars. Let's have a look at our original. Let's set that aside. You know, I'm gonna wash my medium brush too. So it will be ready to use when I need it. Okay, here comes the original. So stars, I have just little white dots all over the sky. And one of the things you'll want to try and do is if, you ever, if you've ever looked up at a night sky, you know the stars aren't perfectly spaced apart from each other. You have areas where like several of them are clustered together and then other areas where the stars are a little further apart. So I try to avoid making a pattern that way. And the easiest way to make stars with a painting project like this is to pick up your tiniest brush and instead of using the brush side, we're gonna use the handle side. We're gonna use it like a rubber stamp kind of. You just stamp it right in the white paint and then just dot as many stars as you want. So with a big bright full moon like this, you normally wouldn't see a ton of stars in the sky surrounding the moon, but you know what's kind of fun about the painting world? You can make your own atmosphere that doesn't even exist because it can exist to you in your painting. So see how I'm just sort of clustering a few together. So I'm just getting the top edge and then I'm gonna come down along the sides too. I do love stargazing at night. It's so cool. And I live in Oregon, which means we get a lot of rain and clouds. So this time of year is when we're really starting to get that. Like today it rained so hard. So I don't get, I don't get to see a lot of uh, starry skies this time of year. So I really look forward to those 
early autumn nights and summer nights when we can see a lot of stars and we have less clouds. But that being said, I do love rain too. <laughs> okay, so make sure you wipe the handle of your brush off because Otherwise, you'll have a big glob of white paint that will dry there. And next time you use this to do stars or something, your stars end up being much bigger because you've got this big plasticky blob at the top. All right, let's have a look and admire this work we've done. Pretty cool. Still looks like a big old orange hill with a, well, now it looks like a moon behind it because we have stars. So now if you had the problem of the brown getting too mixed in your yellow, now it might be dry enough to uh, just bring in a little more yellow with this brush to get some of that brown out of there. The other thing you can do is have a parent help you if needed and use a hair dryer to dry it really fast. It only takes seconds and then you can move along and not worry about it anymore. You can always do that, do that uh, touch up later too if your moon is still too wet. But right now the pumpkin is mostly dry. There's a few little shiny spots, which means those are still wet. But for what we're gonna do next, it'll be just fine. So you see how I have the segments drawn on the pumpkin? I'm just guessing our cat has maybe eaten the stem off. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about painting a stem. And we'll just draw those little segment lines. We wanna use this brush. And we're going to actually mix brown and orange together. So I'll pull my palette over onto the screen, scrape off a little brown. Don't need a lot of paint here. It's just a small thing we're doing. And let's mix some orange with that. So you end up getting a kind of rusty color, I guess. And the nice thing is, is if you go to draw your segment lines and this doesn't show up, just add a little more brown to it or even just the tiniest little touch of black just to darken it so that it's darker than the pumpkin. I'm gonna use the thin edge of the brush and just go along and outline the whole top edge of this pumpkin. Just carefully kind of cleaning up that area where it meets the moon. Again, always use the thin edge of your brush for doing this. And now let's, let's turn this into segments. So I'm gonna start at the top and I wanna parallel this curved outline. So I'm gonna draw a line that comes down to here, but I'm copying the curve of this line. So see how I'm kind of following that same curve? Again, if it's not showing up, add a little more brown to your color or maybe even a little black in there. And if your pumpkin is still a little bit too wet and the paint's not sticking very well, um, just give it a couple minutes and do this. And you can always move along with the cat with us as well, if needed. Let's go ahead and do this one. So same thing, you're gonna parallel this curve using the thin edge of your brush. It's been quite a long time since I taught this painting. And when I taught it, it was a live in-person class. It was really fun. I do love this one. And now I, you might have room for two more. Make sure you have one going this way and one going this way. Or like me, maybe you just have room to do one. So I'm just doing one that kind of goes down the middle, but it is slightly curved. And there's a lot of fancy stuff you can do here. If you ever wanted to, like after the, the tutorial, do some extra stuff. You can do some shading. You can highlight this part. In fact, I'll do that really quick only because I'm buying a little drying time on the moon. I need that to dry just a little bit more. But I wanna show you what it would be like to highlight the pumpkin. So if you think about the moon is our light source. Now the cat's gonna block off a little of the light and technically the cat would cast a shadow down here, but we don't have to worry about that. That's for a much longer class. But you can take your yellow, your yellow and white mixed together that we use to paint the moon and you can put a little shine down along the sides using this brush. You can use the, the thin side or the wide side or a combination of the two, that's what I'm doing. And you can even add a little shine along here. Maybe 
here. These kind of things are just fun little extra touches that make it look a little more finished. And you can make these a little bigger if you wanted to. I just usually I'll start it on the small side and then add a little more. And the cool thing here is if you get this done and you think, Ugh, I really liked it better before, let it dry, use your orange and just paint right over the highlights that we just put on there. So I'm gonna wash my brush. This one line here, I think I need to go over it again. Okay. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, I think this is probably dry enough. It's, there's a few little wet spots, but you can see I'm rubbing my fingers on it and not really picking up much paint. If yours is still too wet, uh, just wait a minute or so before moving on. Or do that little hair dryer trick with your parent. Just need to grab a sip of water. So we'll paint the cat head and the ears and then we will work on the branch and we'll just go back to the cats. So we're going to kind of flip flop back and forth and a lot of that is just allowing drying time. So let's pick up this brush, a medium brush again, dip it in your black paint and you know what? Let's mix one drop of water with a small amount of black paint. You don't have to mix it with all your black paint, just a little bit. So it's not gonna, we don't want this paint to be really milky and fluid. We want it to be just a little bit more liquefied than straight out of the bottle. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it does help with drawing, helps quite a bit. So we're gonna do, I know this is our thing, our theme today is circles, circle, or half circles. We're gonna do another half circle. Now how you draw it right now, will kind of um, determine how big your cat is. Let's look at this one. So I have a nice big cat. He's just this little half circle here. And I'm a big fan of making it large, so let's just go for it. So just mimic your moon shape. But we're using black and you're using the thin edge of the brush. If you feel like you drew it too small, just make a bigger ring around it and everything gets filled in, so we're good. The other thing we add later is some fur, so that's gonna help bulk it out some more too. Okay, I think that's about right. So you wanna make sure you have room for two eyes and a nose. Now, if you don't have room for the mouth, you can leave that off, but it is kind of fun to put the fangs. Now you can see on my original, that mouth goes right up to the pumpkin and the fangs are just right on there. So I, I didn't have a ton of room. Let's make the ears. Ears are easy, just little triangle shapes on either side and they can be far apart or close together. They can be tilted outwards. They can be tall and pointy, or they can be shorter and round. And you know, let's go ahead and fill those in. Let's see how our yellow moon is. If your yellow is smearing into this, just keep going and uh, just know that we'll go back and touch up. That's what happens and it's easy fix. There, now it just looks like a cat headband. <laughs> so remember earlier, I was telling you that the eyes on the cat are actually just the moon color shining through. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's, let's just set this brush in the water. You don't need to wash it off right now. Um, I, the eyes are shaped like lemons and I like to do the eyes really big, just knowing that I can make them smaller if I want. If you start out small, then you're kind of locked into that size. And I think the, the larger eyes are really fun and cartoony, but we wanna draw them with our little brush. So let's talk about the shape of the eyes. We're gonna draw them with black. So dip your brush in water just to freshen up the, the bristles. I'm gonna use this black that I kind of liquefied a little bit earlier. Cat eyes are, the ones I have are just shaped like lemons. So I just do a rainbow with a smile underneath. 
So then you've got this nice little lemon shaped eye. Other eye shapes you can do is the rainbow, straight underneath, or you can do like an almond shaped eye that's kind of tilted upwards. That gives you more of an exotic cat. And then we'll, we'll come back and we'll put the pupils in each of these. But there you get an idea of how you can dictate your kitty cat eye shape. If you want to do round eyes, just like a, I've done a lot of cat paintings with round eyes and they just always look like they're really surprised, but they're <laughs> cute. Okay, so let's use our little brush. Dip it in your, your black paint here. And very carefully, we're gonna draw, I'll draw the lemon shape for mine. So I'm going to do a rainbow, right? It's kind of centered under this ear area. Just imagine a, a dotted line. In fact, you can draw one. Let's divide our face in half with a little dotted line. It gets covered up with black, so it's no biggie. So arch, like a rainbow. Smile underneath. So then I have a nice big eye. And I just try to go across, I check the distance here. And I try to mark a spot that's about the same distance. Drawing for me on the left side is always a little harder. I just try to remember how big did I make that? It's a rainbow shape. And smile shape. Now later on, if you start really drawing a lot, one thing, you know how I divided that? You would actually divide it this way too. And that way you have an eye line so that you can make sure your eyes are, like one's not way higher than the other. But because we need this yellow background, we're not gonna do that because we don't want a dotted line going right through our eyes. That wouldn't look so great. Let's wash this little brush off. And now you can go back to one of your bigger brushes. I'll just use this medium one. I just stuck it in the water and I'm just gonna wipe it on the paper towel because I don't need to change the color, but I did need to um, get the water off. So I'm gonna fill in the cat face. And you can use your thick right out of the bottle paint here. You don't need to use a thin down version we made. And if your moon yellow is mixing with it a little bit, just keep filling it in and plan on when it's dry going back and, and touching it up with some fresh black. You can touch up any area that's smeared or even give the whole cat face a second coat of paint, but you have to let it dry between coats and it doesn't take long. Right around here where the nose is gonna go, I'm just gonna use not super thick paint because I really need that area to dry. And here's what, I'm using the thin edge of my brush and I'm going right across the top of the pumpkin just to sort of border that cat off from the pumpkin. Now this is where once you have this face filled in, this is where you could decide, do you need to make the eyes smaller? If so, just carefully use your littlest brush and carefully keep tracing black around them until you get them to the size you want. If the eyes ended up a little messed up and you need to redo them, my advice to you would be let everything dry before you do it. And then I would paint the new eyes over the top in white after, make sure the black's dry or else they'll be gray. So let the cat dry. This is only if you have to fix the eyes. Let the cat dry and um, then paint white eyes. Let the white eyes dry and then paint yellow over. It's, it's something very easy you can do on your own if you have to end up doing that outside of the video tutorial. But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fluff the cat up. So you can have a cat that's very smoothed out if you have like a short haired cat and you wanna paint your own cat. Um, this one, I just made him nice and furry and fuzzy. It looks like Batman. <laughs> it's like a Batman mask peeking over the top of the pumpkin. So to make that furry texture, I use the thin edge of the brush and I just literally flick outward I flick outward and upward a little bit. And I keep going until I have the fluffy cat I love. 
however you like it. Looking less and less like Batman now. So again, I'm just using the thin edge of the brush and flicking into the background. And I just keep doing it until I get it as wide as I want. Some cats have really fluffy cheeks, depending on the variety of cat. Like Maine Coons have uh, Norwegian Forest Cats are two varieties I know that have very fluffy faces. If you want uh, ear fluff, you can do that too. Maybe just at the base of the ears. So you know how cats have the, the hair that grows up over the top of their ears from the base here. And then the top of the head. We can't forget the top of the head or it looks like someone came through with clippers and cut the top of the hair off. So I, here's what I do there. I'm, I'm using that flicking motion, but I'm sort of curving the hair off to the side. You can make it go straight up if you want, but then he looks a little buzz cut, buzz cut-ish. So I do kind of just flick it off to the side. Maybe there's a little gust of wind blowing. Properly fluffed, love it. Wash the brush. Let's get some paws on this pumpkin and then we'll let the cat dry, work on the branch, come back and finish up the cat and we'll be done. Okay, let's pick up our littlest brush for the paws. And again, you might mix one drop of water with some of your black, just for drawing. Makes it a little more fluid and easy, easier to draw because your brush isn't running out of paint so fast. And for the paws, I did them outside the face. So you may even have them like wrapped way down here. It doesn't matter, but I do want to have them showing. So if I put them right here, they're not really going to show. So I, first I'm doing like a little rainbow shape or that half arch that seems to be our theme of this painting. <laughs> and then I do three little uh, scallop shapes. The one in the middle, you can make a little bit bigger if you want. So I come down and I go one, two, three. And then I can fill these paws in. He's really got a hold on this thing. He is not letting anyone else near <laughs> this pumpkin. A little possessive cat. Later on, we'll draw some claws. Add some more hair right here. <laughs> it's looking cute. Looking cute. I'm gonna wash the brush off. Okay, you can finish up your paws. And we'll, we'll start talking about branches. Now, if you like the idea of this painting without the branch, it's your painting, you can do whatever you want. But I did put a little branch across the top in black and that allowed me to also put some falling orange leaves, which I thought was pretty fun. So what we have left to do is we'll do the branch, we'll do the leaves coming down and then we'll come back to the cat. We'll paint the pupils, we'll paint the nose and the mouth and the whiskers and the fangs and the claws. All that goes pretty fast. I'm just thinking ahead real quick. I think I'll have us paint the uh, actual pupils in the eyes right now because I was just remembering as I was looking at it, those need to dry before we paint the white highlights on it. And if we do that now, we have a much, much more likely um, chance of it drying good. So let's use our little brush in black. You can mix a drop of water with your paint if you want. And you can do little slits, but what I did was I did kind of a rounded shape that just ends in a point like that. So it's like the almond shape. And you can bring it all the way down to the bottom if you want, or just close to the bottom. Because if you, if you uh, bring it close to the bottom, then he doesn't look like he's rolling his eyes and looking up. <laughs> we don't want him to look too crazy. <laughs> So if he looks like he's looking up, you're gonna bring, you wanna come back and bring this point down closer to the bottom of the eye. So he's not rolling his eyes. Gonna clean up the shape of my eye real quick here. 
cool. So because of the way my moon was, this cat is um, has like bicolor eyes, where <laughs> one has kind of more orange in it and the other is just pure yellow. It's always fun. Oh, I don't know why I washed my brush. We're gonna be using black again. Do mix maybe one or two drops of water with some of your black here. And I find the best way to paint tree branches, now you can just start over here and paint one, but I like to turn my canvas to the side like this. And instead of thinking like, I'm painting a branch, I think about like, uh, it's like a lightning bolt. Now you don't wanna make it like zigzaggy jagged. It's a soft lightning bolt. <laughs> a soft and non-threatening lightning bolt. So I'm gonna start here. See, I'm gonna, rather than zigzag, I'm just kind of making it kind of curvy. And I come to about there. Now, I wanna make this branch a little thicker here where it comes out of the side of the canvas. And then it's gonna join back in so it's really thin on the ends because that's how branches grow. They're, they're thicker where they grow out of the tree trunk, which is somewhere over here. And then thinner on the ends. So I'm just filling that little gap in. So the main branch is done, that was pretty easy. Now let's make for our, our little wavy lightning bolt, our soft lightning bolt, we're gonna make little other forks of lightning coming off here. You make the broken branch, maybe you make one that goes off the top of the canvas. not pushing very hard and I'm making these kind of long so when you push really hard you get really thick lines as you've probably figured out by now and if you use really light pressure and see how I'm holding my brush back kind of far on the handle when I hold my brush far back it doesn't allow me to push hard if you hold your brush way down here it's really easy to push hard and there are sometimes we don't want that but if you end up with a thicker branch than mine, don't worry about it because I have done this painting lots of times and there's been several times where the branch is a lot thicker than it is on this one. But I feel like I have enough twiggy little branches going on. I'm gonna wash the brush off. And I'm loving the way this is looking so far. I'm gonna pick up my medium sized brush and I'm gonna paint some leaves. Now I don't actually paint individual leaf shapes. You can see these are all about the size of the brush. So what I do is I use my orange and I just dab little falling bits. I need a little more orange. Um, so here's one thing you wanna avoid is don't paint over the branch yet. If you're painting leaves, you don't wanna pop any over the branches yet or they will turn black or grayish orange. Oh, that's runny. Okay, so now I got fresh orange. And I'm just gonna put them in the moon for right now. Kind of close to the ends of the branches. Just like the stars, you can cluster them together. Because if you've ever seen leaves falling, you know they don't leave perfect amounts of space between themselves. If they're gonna fall, they're gonna fall all at once. A big gust of wind comes through and that's it. So I'm putting some up here, like maybe the wind's blowing them upward. It can be just like someone threw confetti up in the air and it's falling down to this cat. It's a pumpkin party with the cat. Now when the branch dries towards the end of the painting, you can come back and you can put leaves on top of or right at the ends of some of the branches. It's just right now while everything's wet, we wanna be careful of that. I'm bringing some leaves down here too. Later on, you could even put some over the cat's face, but again, you'll wanna wait till the cat dries completely. So that's how I want it to be right now. Because we have a few minutes, I'm looking at the time, we're doing really good time-wise. We've got just, we've got about 15 minutes left till we're at an hour. Um, well, actually it'll, it'll probably be, we probably have a little bit more time than that. Um, but while I'm just kind of waiting for things to dry a bit more here, I'm going to go back and add more highlights to this because as they've dried, they've gotten a little, um, darker. So I'm going to mix white 
and yellow. And I'll just come right here and use the thin edge of my brush. Maybe right here too, just be careful around the kitty cat's paw. And now would be a good time too, if you feel like you need to reline the segments. So if you're, if you need to remake this brown, it was orange and brown. And if you want, you can put a little black in there if you want it even darker. And I use the thin edge of the brush and just reline that. You can use your smallest brush for this too if that's a little easier for you. And any spots that you feel like need a little more orange paint, you can totally do that. Our expressionless cat. Ugh, you just see a spot I want to touch up. It's one spot that would not take paint. There we go. He's eaten the stem. <laughs> okay. So I washed off my medium sized brush. I'll have you guys do the same. And we are going to mix a color for the cat's nose. Now I made peach, which is just orange and white. But if you want a gray nose, you can mix black and white. And uh, if you want a brown, well, I don't know. You can do like a light brown nose by mixing white and brown together. But, but yeah, I just, I made peach. So I just took a little orange, dabbed it down a little white, mixed those together. And just alter it until you have a color you like. If you want to tone this down and not have such a vibrant peach, you could even just put a little brown into it. See the color difference? I mixed brown into half of it so you can kind of see. I do like it sort of toned down, but you don't have to have it that way. Let's set this brush in the water. Pick up the little guy. So our nose is an upside down triangle and I do kind of round the corners a little bit so it's not like a sharp triangle. And I'll just dip the brush in that new paint I mixed together. And I let's have a look at how much room we have. So if you don't have a lot of room between the middle of the eyes and the top of the pumpkin, put your nose up pretty high, like between the eyes. That way you'll have room to do the curved mouth with the fangs. Otherwise, if you put the mouth way down here, you're just gonna end up having to crowd that uh, mouth in there. So your your nose can be right directly in between the eyes if you need or just down a little bit. I think right here is perfect for me. And I'll fill that in. It's mixing a little bit with the black paint under the cat. That's one of the things that has always happened with this painting. <laughs> no worries though. I can always go back when the nose has dried and just put another coat of the peach over the top. So I'm ending up with a gray nose, whatever. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Again, I can let that dry, come back with the peach and paint right over the top of it, but it'll probably take a good five minutes. So let's draw the mouth now. Uh, I think I did the mouth in white, but you could also do the mouth in the peach. But I'll just go with white since it mixes with the black anyways. I think I'm gonna mix a drop of water. A gray mouth would be fine too. Now what I do is I draw a straight line and then on this side I just draw a J. See, it's like the letter J. And this one is a backwards J. Very cute. Now I'm gonna wash my brush so I'm working with pure white next because I white mixed with a little wet black cat color. And I'm gonna use very little white on the tip of the bristles. And for the fangs, just two long skinny upside down triangle shapes. Just chewing on that pumpkin. <laughs> you could do, a, okay, I'm gonna have fun here. I'm gonna do the little middle teeth 
Oh my gosh, I've never thought of doing that. Look how cute that is. <laughs> I love it, it's a little wolf cat. <laughs> and now for the, the um, nails, the claws. I might have called them fangs earlier, I don't know. Because they are the same exact shape. <laughs> That would have been funny. I had to rewind it and see if I said fangs. We're going to paint our fangs on the paws. <laughs> We're making a whole new variety of cat. Now you can make these really long or they can be um, <laughs> on the shorter side. Uh, they could be gray, they could be black. They could, if you have red paint, you can give your cat red nails. If you want to do like little scratch marks, let's see what that would look like. I'm only doing that because I have a little time. I'm going to mix black and brown together. And you have to be careful not to touch the white, but you can draw one little scratch mark from each claw. That's cute. This is optional. This is me just having fun doing something different, <laughs> buying some time. So yeah, we changed it up a bit, didn't we? Look at that. This is the nice gentle cat and this one's a little more vicious. This one really wants the pumpkin. So we don't have a whole lot left to do. Um, I want to put some highlights in the eyes and I want to do some whiskers and then I'll have a signer painting. So for the eye highlights, these should be dry. I know mine are dry. Hopefully yours are dry too. Wash a brush. I'm gonna dip the very tip of the bristles in some white. I don't pick up a lot, see, you can see there's not a ton on there. And then up here in the upper left of each pupil, I do a little like star-shaped white dot. Now you could use the handle of your brush if you want. And then just down diagonally a little bit from that, I do another, so he's got a little double shine going on. And then one thing you'll do when your nose is, um, when the nose on yours is dry and you're ready to highlight it, you can put a little shine across the top of the nose like that. So that's totally something you can do. And then for whiskers, I think uh, mine are probably going to end up being gray in the end because I do have some wet black that they have to go through. But I don't know, they might not. It's pretty dry. But because we're doing kind of longer, wispier lines, here are the tricks. We want to use very light pressure. So if it helps to hold your brush back a little further down the um, handle. We want to use not a lot of paint on the brush, but we also want to have water mixed with the paint. So I'm going to put a drop of water on my paint palette, stir some white into it. Now, anytime you mix paint up with your brush, you end up with a really thick glob on the brush like that. We don't want to start a really fine line, like a whisker, with really big blobby thick paint on our brush. So I'm going to just pull and twist it on my towel and then I'll redip the tip of the bristles, just the very tip of the bristles into the watered down paint. I think I just grabbed too much. And we'll see how this goes. I might need to actually mix more paint into my watered down version, but the whiskers grow out here and very light pressure. I'm pressing so light that I almost didn't get a full line. So I do three. I'm kind of going out like a V-shape, like, boop. I can't do it there, bink, <laughs> to make the sound effects too. One, two, three. Sometimes if you do it fast and without thinking about it, it ends up being better. Now cats also have little whiskers above their eyes. Those are optional. I left them off the original, but if you want to put them on there, why not? This is your cat. You can do whatever you want. You could paint the inside of the ears with the peach color or uh, gray. I'll try the peach color. There, I just paint a smaller triangle on the inside and fill it in. All of these little things, they're just extra details that make your painting look more finished overall like the highlights we did on the pumpkin and the, uh, the scratch marks. <laughs> and now if you feel like you wanna go back and add more orange leaves, you can do that anytime. So like around maybe on top of some of these branches or at the ends, 
There's gotta be some still stuck on the trees, right? There we go. And your very last thing you wanna do is sign your painting. He's all ready for Halloween, looking very cute. Um, pick any color you want to sign your painting with, except for orange, because <laughs> that won't show up. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do my white and yellow mix from earlier, so I feel like that's a good color. It'll kind of balance out the moon here. And I do like to stir a drop of water in when I'm gonna sign, because I'm using a small fluid brush strokes. Again, look at the globby paint from mixing, so twist and pull on your paper towel, then redip the tip of the bristles. And I have just over the years developed my two initials JS <laughs> into a little loop-de-loo, and I do a little fun dot just, just to make it unique. But that's how I sign my paintings. You can sign yours however you like. Design your own artist signature. It can be what, whatever, however you wanna do it. You can also sign the back of the painting when everything's dry, there's plenty of room back there. So there we go, very cute. He's ready for Halloween. Hopefully you guys are too. I hope you have a wonderful uh, holiday season and we'll see you for the next video. Bye.